the most well-documented and even reported from consumers impact of consuming lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, you know, probiotics in general and yogurts is around GI symptoms, things like gas and bloating and diarrhea and constipation. A lot of people report, and there have been studies kind of showing both sides of it, but but basically there have definitely been studies showing and people reporting they have better GI when they're consuming these probiotics or these yogurts with probiotics. Quickly, the difference between a probiotic and a prebiotic. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, the vocabulary lesson. And, there's, and I'll introduce another one that's become popularized, which is the postbiotic. Mm. So um, essentially, you know, the 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 microbiome when we talk about it is all these you know bacterial and 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 yeast strains that's the probiotic so the probiotic is the living organism itself prebiotic is the food that feeds those organisms so we talked about you know fibers and inulin and and polyphenols and things like that those are prebiotics so prebiotics are the food the probiotic is the organism itself and then what these organisms produce or what they secrete is called now being called the postbiotic mm. and so you would call you know for, butyrate, butyrate would, be would be a postbiotic yeah when and then maybe one more term yeah. analogy that people might start seeing is symbiotic and all symbiotic refers to is you've mixed two or more of these things together the pre and the probiotic together. Together, or the probiotic and the postbiotic. So a symbiotic has, you know, multiple. Okay. So when people are consuming yogurt, they're consuming a prebiotic, presumably? No, actually, they're... Or it's the bacteria in it that yeah, they're trying to... They're, they're lactobacillus bacteria that are in that yogurt um, that can, that, that stay alive in the context of yogurt. And so that that's really what you're consuming. And what what is the perceived, believed, or realized efficacy of consuming massive amounts uh, of lactobacillus and, and bifidobacter? I think the most um, well-documented and even reported from consumers, you know, impact of consuming lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, you know, probiotics in general and yogurts is around GI symptoms. So things like gas and bloating and diarrhea and constipation. A lot of people report and there have been studies kind of showing both sides of it. But but basically there have definitely been studies showing and people reporting they have better GI when they're consuming these probiotics or these yogurts with probiotics. If you go and buy like yogurt off the shelf, how much lactobacillus is naturally within that? Or I think it... they add it in. So they do. It, it varies. It's not something that naturally occurs in yogurt. I think it is naturally occurring in yogurt, but the but all the things that you're buying off the shelf, they're also supplementing with additional lactobacillus. The real question to ask yourself when you're buying yogurt is how much sugar is in it. <laughs> for, for sure, if you're buying like fruity flavored yogurts. Um, by the way, I want to come back and talk about sugars in a second, but um, go, I want to go back to kind of this this um, probiotic. Um, how much, like what is the dose effect, right? So I know that if you look at a bottle of pick your favorite probiotic, it usually uses something called CFUs, colony forming units. Can you explain what those are? Yes. Some brilliant marketer decided that that was going to become the metric, the name of the game for probiotics. Um, so colony forming units, it, again, we'll remember back to seventh grade biology where you might have been given a Petri dish and you had to like swab your mouth or swab your hand or put your finger on it and then you see what grows. That's That's basically that that tool. So you take your, um, you know, your pill or, or whatever, your yogurt, and you, you basically spread it out on a Petri dish. And then you count how many colonies form. And that gives you a number. So you'll say, well, gee, this pill has, you know, 10 to the ninth colony forming units in it. So, you know, some marketer decided that that's the most important thing is the number of colony forming units. And I have, you know, 10 times more colony forming units than somebody else. I, you know, again, th that's maybe that's interesting, but it's less relevant than, than the function of what's happening in your pill. Um, and moreover, it only gives you a, a one piece of data about what's in that pill. So when you do that, the only thing you get to see are what's able to form a colony. But actually, in almost every supplement, every probiotic out there, the majority of what's in that pill is dead probiotic. And you don't see any of that when you use this technology. There's a different tool that can be used called flow cytometry, um, and essentially what you do is you take your capsule, you put it into this flow cytometer, and what it pops out, its readout is 
live cells, dead cells, and kind of in between cells. It's based on a you know staining of the membrane, and so it tells you you know which of these cells is viable, like the membrane is really intact, which of them have a compromised membrane, and which ones are kind of somewhere in between. Um, and now you know exactly what's in your pill because even if you could have the same number of live cells, it turns out that those dead cells and those in between cells they actually have a role to play. They have a function in there. So these so-called postbiotics, that's what those guys are. And so you're missing, you don't really know what's in your pill unless you're using flow cytometry versus colony forming units. And when you do flow cytometry, what do you stain for? Which, which surface um, receptors or molecules are you staining for? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I think there's two that we stain for, but I actually don't remember. Okay. And it yeah. varies by bacteria, I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, there's some of these common ones among almost all bacteria. But okay. Yeah.